This video is part of a series of electrical calculation guides and I will add a link to the playlist at the top of the screen. If you find this video helpful, please give us a like and subscribe for updates on future videos. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to calculate the maximum cable length to comply with the maximum volt drop specified in BS 7671. The length of the circuit also affects compliance with the disconnection times, so it's important to consider the length of the circuits when designing an installation. In this video, I'm just going to be talking about fault drop. This video is intended as a guide for those working in the industry. The topics in my videos are based on questions that I am asked from time to time and on my experience of more than 20 years. The length of final circuits affects the volt drop and it is necessary to ensure that the volt drop doesn't exceed the maximum permitted by BS7671, which is 3% for lighting and 5% for other uses. So for a single phase installation, that works out to 6.9 volts for lighting circuits and 11.5 volts for power circuits. So here we have the volt drop calculation from the on-site guide. The volt drop can be calculated by multiplying the value of millivolts per ampere per meter by the design current and the length and then dividing by 1000. So to find the maximum length to comply with the maximum volt drop, we need to transpose the equation as shown in the example at the bottom of this page. So if we take the maximum volt drop for the final circuit, either 6.9 volts or 11.5 volts for a single phase circuit, and multiply by 1000, and then divide by the design current, and multiply by the value for millivolts per ampere per meter for the cable, that will give us the maximum circuit length to comply with the volt drop. So for a radial circuit where we know the load in watts, we can calculate the design current for the circuit and we can find the value for millivolts per ampere per meter in Appendix 4 of BS7671 on the table for the relevant type of cable. But what about ring circuits? So there are two differences when carrying out the equation in ring socket circuits. Firstly, we don't calculate the design current in the same way as we do for a circuit where we know the load in watts. Where a ring circuit is installed in accordance with Appendix 15 of BS 7671, a 2.5 mil cable can be protected by a 32 amp protector device, provided that the current does not exceed 20 amps in each leg of the ring. However, 20 amps isn't the design current. One solution to this is by taking the average of 32 amps, the rating of the protected device, and 20 amps, and we get a figure of 26 amps. So this can be used in place of the design current in this equation here. The second difference is that because the circuit is wired in a ring, when we are measuring to the farthest point of the circuit, it's necessary to add a multiplier of four to the equation to allow for the loop of the circuit. So the equation can be carried out as follows. The max volt drop, which will be 11.5, multiplied by four, multiplied by a thousand, and then divided by the design current, which will be 26 amps, multiplied by millivolts per ampere per meter. So here we have an example calculation. If we take the example of a ring socket circuit wired in 2.5 mil flat PVC PVC cable with a maximum volt drop of 5%, which comes to 11.5 volts, the design current we've taken to be 26 amps, and the millivolts per ampere per meter is 18, and that's taken from table 4D5. So the calculation becomes 11.5 multiplied by four, multiplied by a thousand, and then divided by 26, multiplied by 18. And that gives us a total of 98 meters. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please subscribe to my channel where I hope to add more videos on electrical engineering subjects.